Hey guys, Brian Goes Blue. And Coco too. Back again with another movie trip review vlog for you today. Today we're going to go see an 80s classic. Um, one that I've always loved. Um, really funny movie. Probably one of my favorite 80s movies, honestly. And that is none other than... Best Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah. Um, for one night only here at uh, RAMC, they have a um, Fathom Events. I believe it's a Fathom Events. Uh, 40th anniversary showing. Um... It was uh, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m., so we chose the 7 p.m. slot, of course, mm -hmm. uh, after our work and everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're really excited to go check this out in the big screen. Um, Coco's only seen it one other time, so. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it probably, I don't know, 15 times, 20 times. I don't even, I don't even know at this point. But we haven't, I haven't watched the Criterion that I got last year um, that, you, oh, yeah. that you gave me as a gift. We haven't watched So we haven't seen like the newer scan or anything. So hopefully this is the newer scan on the big screen tonight. That would be cool. Um, I do think that there's like a uh, little thing at the end after the credits, like a little special feature. So we'll talk about that when we get back in the car too. Like there was in Wizard of Oz. Yeah, like there was in Wizard of Oz. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and there's no previews for this. The movie just starts right at the time. So Yeah, and it's 6.54 now. So we've got to get in there soon. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Judge Reinhold's my favorite in this uh, movie. He's great, um, but I also love the the character that plays Damone, even though he's a, he's like a likable uh, jerk. Yeah. So, um, and then J Jennifer Jason Lee and Phoebe Cates, and they all do a pretty good job in here. Mhm. Mm um, yeah. So, any words? No, I'm just excited. All right. Show more words later, guys. I'm excited for a refresher. A refresher. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just excited to see this on the big screen for the first time. Probably the only time we'll be able to see it on you the big know, screen. You know who pauses this movie at, uh, what is it, 53 minutes and 5 seconds? Everybody. People who like boobies. Oh yeah, boobs, yeah. That was said in Stranger Things Season 4. <laughs> yeah, it Remember was. Steve said that to, yeah, he to Robin? He's like, she, she returned fast times and paused at 53 minutes and 5 seconds. Yeah. You know who pauses at five, 53 minutes and 5 seconds? Or no, yeah, 53 minutes five. I was making sure I said that right. Yeah, and there's always these um, funny jokes about that scene too. Um, like, why does my VHS tape mess up at this exact part every <laughs> every, every time I ran it? That's funny. <laughs> so, That's really funny. Yeah. But yeah, there's that iconic scene too. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. we gotta head in there. So we're gonna go see this movie. We're gonna see it. We'll be right back. Back, 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 back. <laughs> well, that was amazing to see Fast Times in the theaters for the first time. Um, this next one we're looking forward to seeing is Jaws. We're going to see that in IMAX sometime in September, the beginning of September. And also, E.T. comes back this month, or next month in August. Very excited. And we're back in the car, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was an awesome experience. Always love seeing older movies in the theater. Uh, you know, last month we saw Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. That was great for the for the um, for Judy's hundred yeah hundred hundred year old birthday. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. And everything in the '80s is turning forty. Um, you know, coming up. So. Um, 40th anniversaries are coming up for the for E.T. and Jaws. Those yeah. are both those are both coming to theaters, as you saw in the clip before when I showed the poster. Mm -hmm. um, so those are going to be in IMAX. So we don't really go see IMAX because um, not that it's bad. It's awesome. The theater the theater experience is awesome, but the seating is um, more old school. They don't have the reclinable chairs and everything like the yeah. newer seats and the newer theaters and the Dolby's and everything. And we're spoiled now with we're the spoiled recliners. With, yeah, with the we're, we're lazy boys. <laughs> um, but anywho, uh, how did you like the second watch of your of the film? I liked it a lot. Yeah. I I remember I didn't remember a whole lot. I did a refresher by like watching an old trailer today. Yeah. And it I, that helped me out, but I just like I had so much fun with it. And that, like you were saying um how you like Damone, like I really do like his character until mm -hmm. that part and then you're just like, "Oh, he's a chode." 
Yeah, but then but, but then he gets. But he's a good actor. Like he's he's just I don't know. He's just like a cool, suave kind of dude. Like yeah. I don't know. And then him and his buddy, you know, patch things up at the end. So yeah, so it's all good and fine. Yeah. But yeah, I think my favorite my favorite character or my favorite person in the the movie is um, Judge Reinhold. Yeah, for Brad. sure. Yeah, Brad. Yeah. He's just like the funniest, and I don't know. He's just goofy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good character. It's crazy because like it's a it's a what an hour and a half. Yeah. It felt it feels like it goes by so fast. Mm-hmm. Wait no. Wait no. My favorite is not Judge Ryan. Okay. It's Sean Penn. Spicoli. Yes. Yeah. I he he's got me laughing the whole time. Yeah. I think he's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Learning about Cuba, eating some food. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I can quote like every one of his quotes. I love it. It's like all I need is a um, something waves, tasty waves, a cool buzz, waves and I'm and fine. Cool buzz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need money. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and you know, the whole Damone thing. It makes you think about like. Well, it makes me think about like, um, like when you're in high school, when you're like younger, like that, you'll make those kind of uh, poor decisions and stuff, and you'll mm -hmm. learn from them, and uh, then just goes to show like that you can be an adult about it and kind of patch things up and um, yeah, and grow from it really. So yeah, on both sides of the coin too, uh -huh. because like it, I mean, I don't want to get into like anything crazy because I don't want to offend anybody. But, um, I will say that it's like, it's, it's less disturbing because it's not like one of those take advantage kind of situations. Like it was mutual between them, but still it happened, you know, and she, they should have been smarter about it. And she obviously was kind of like, she didn't know that yeah. that was going to happen. She was like very like, yeah. I don't know. What For she, those of you that don't know, we're talking about Jennifer Jason Lee's uh, yes. pregnancy in the movie. Yes. But she's very, like, innocent and kind of, like, naive about everything. And so I don't even think she knew that that could, like, even happen. Yeah. But, um, no, that's just to say that, like, you know, being younger, you kind of go for, like, the bad boy. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then, I don't know, it just makes you think about that kind of stuff, yep. too. Don't listen to your parents, you know. Mm-hmm. Because she could have the nice guy all along. He liked her. They went out to dinner, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, oh, I think I like you. And then, pff, look where that got you. Yeah. I mean, I could, you know. So in most cases that wouldn't that would have deterred the nice guy away forever. But uh Yeah. You know, this guy was this guy stuck around. Yeah. So. I liked his character a lot too. Yeah, he's a <laughs> he's pretty funny in the burning. I was I was saying earlier oh, yeah. in the theater to her. Yeah. Because he's in the burning and he's really like kinda weird in that movie too. Mm -hmm. Mark Ratner's character. Uh, yeah. The Mark Ratner character. I forget his name in real life. Um, oh yeah. There's so many cameos in this movie too. Like you got Forrest Whitaker, um, mm -hmm. very small, um, just a, kind of a walk-on role. Nicholas Cage, just yeah, working at the burger place <laughs> in the background. Nick Capola. Yeah, Nicholas Coppola. Cause, oh, uh, Coppola. Yeah. I said Capola. He's, uh, he's Francis Ford Francis Coppola's Ford, yeah. nephew, I believe, and he just changed his name to Nicholas Cage when, oh. he, got, when he was getting known okay. for movies and stuff. Um, kind of his, his acting stage name and the pizza guy the pizza delivery guy is someone i recognize yeah, too i don't remember his name wasn't he in something with mary kate nashley so little time yeah so little time yeah he was in that okay that's what it was and he's in this movie called the stone age that i like a lot okay um he's just in a, he's one of those characters that's in oh he's in a biodome oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but he's just this random character that's in a lot of stuff he, he passed away too like hmm. we're pretty young pretty young age um, who else? Uh, Kelly Maroney from uh, Night of the Comet and yep. Chopping Mall. Oh, and the girl, the blonde girl from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, you said. Oh, yeah, and... yeah, yeah. Uh, Amanda Weiss is her name. She does conventions too. Okay. Uh, she's in Better Off Dead. Oh, yeah, that's the other one you said. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll admit, I wasn't going to admit this on film, but I'll just say it because, like, who cares? Whatever. So, as you guys know, Brian showed me a lot of movies I'd never seen before. This being one of them. And Dazed and Confused being another. And I feel like...
we watched them so close, like around the same time. Yeah. I he told me like the the difference in years. Obviously, this is early '80s. That's early '90s. Totally different cast. Like, but for whatever reason in my brain, the thought of like driving around in the cars and being in high school and being at the mall. Maybe there's not mall in Days and Confused. I don't know, but smoking it up and all that. Like in my brain, it all just kind of like meshed together, and my yeah. brain got confused between the two movies. But this helped me like remember like okay yeah. I know the characters. I know the, the story. It's like completely different, but I don't know. Does that happen with anybody? Like, I don't know. Probably not the big yeah, movie buffs because no, they mean, know the no, movies through and through. I think that's a that's a thing with these with those two movies, especially because uh, you might have noticed it might have just been in there, like subliminally in your brain somewhere because um, back when they released these movies on DVD. Mm -hmm. They put them in a in a two pack set, both of the movies, oh. I, multiple times too. Okay. So it was like around the same time they put Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore in a, in a yeah, double, I double pack. Yeah, I had that. I had that in one. double pack. Yeah, yes. they had one for Fast Times and Days of Confused oh, as well. Oh, that's probably why. So. I just didn't know if it was a long shot. Like that. Like no. that's like someone saying to me, like, "Oh yeah, I get Wizard of Oz and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory confused," and it'd be like, "Are you serious?" Yeah. But that's not really the same kind of comparison. Yeah, I just think of the I think of Fast Times as a, as a much more serious take, especially with the the whole um, yeah, you know, taking her to the clinic and that that whole scene and everything. And, and now that you mention yeah. that, I think of Last American Virgin when I think of Fast Times too because yeah. of that. Yeah, I know that's it's a little it's that's a, different. A, that's a very underrated that's... one that a lot of people haven't seen. Like it's not mm -hmm. as popular. Yeah. But, uh, that's Especially because the guy, the, the the main guy in that, he's like dark hair, big nose, yeah. kind of like yeah. goofy, like rat. Mm -hmm. Not I'm not saying he's a rat, the guy rat. Mar Ratner. Yeah, they call him, he's, he, call, he calls him rat, yeah. rat or raj or whatever he calls him. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. That's just my my thought process on that. Yeah, and uh, and the director later on the nineties directed Clueless in like ninety four. So mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Amy Heckerling is her name. Um. We had a like kind of a weird experience. Like, yeah. We the uh, well, we'll just tell you guys whatever. This was excluded from a list, so take with that what you will. That's mm -hmm. that's just what I'll say. So we went to the movie. There was two other people in there, single single people in there, um, and we walked in and like perfect timing. The movie was just about to start, but like a few minutes in, I noticed like I'm like, wait, the lights haven't gone down, and Brian's yeah. like, oh yeah. That's that's weird. Mm -hmm. So I called the theater from the from the movie theater and I said, "Can this, you turn the, the lights on?" This isn't the first time you've done this either. No. So the girl's like, "Oh yeah, we'll we'll get right on that." And then like 20 minutes goes by, nothing. So he's calling, yeah. calling, calling, and then finally leaves the theater. And what'd you say? You flagged somebody down? Yeah, I walked by and I flagged this. This, uh, I mean, attendant. I guess he was just cleaning theaters. Mm -hmm. uh, he had like dustpan with him and everything. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he 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 walks in. He, I was like, theater eight is a. Uh, the lights are still on and the movie's playing. He's like, whoa, that's that's strange. So he, he walks in there and then he goes and um, he tries to turn the light off on the, with the switch next to the door. No, yeah. Nothing happens. And then he like walks into the theater and fo follows me into the theater and just is like, yeah, look, I just, he's like looking around like, see B he's, like walk in. he's like, aren't the lights supposed to be on? I just see B walk in and I see the worker like looking up at the ceiling at the lights and I'm like, what the heck? This kid's totally like fucking clueless. <laughs> It was just a funny experience because I go to sit down and then we're sitting down and the lights still aren't off for like a couple more minutes and then yeah. I, I see his little head poking up yep, again. from the side. It was just funny. Yeah, and then all of a sudden the lights go really bright, brighter than we've ever seen yeah. them. And then, and and then, then they finally go off. Down. So like half, half an hour, the first half an hour we were watching the movie with the lights on. Yeah. But whatever. And at the end of the movie, roll credits, screen goes black, movie, whole Everything. movie theater's the black. The whole movie theater's still black. <laughs> never came on and they never um put out the um whatever additional footage was supposed to be at the end here yeah i think it might have just been like the cast and crew kind of talking maybe something that's on the criterion yeah which by the way if you if you like fast times urge my high and don't own the criterion pick that up because it's got like mm -hmm. an extra cut of the movie and all sorts of interviews and stuff and i haven't even checked it all out yet yeah we gotta do that yeah and watch the tv cut you yeah we're gonna watch the tv cut with yeah. the alternate scenes in there Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think it might look like a VHS, but that's fine with me. Yeah. But, uh... So, what do you give this one? I know you've given it, it's probably the same for you in the past. Is it a five for you? I think so. Yeah. I just relate a lot to it, and I just, I don't know, I think it's really cool. 
Mm -hmm. And it's uh, one that's worked a lot of people's careers. Yeah. So. I love the mall. I love the 80s mall movies. I'm a sucker for the 80s mall movies. And like you said, the cast. Oh, and in, awesome. in one of the scenes, too, we did notice in the background uh, a sign that said Licorice Pizza. Yes. That was really cool. With the record. Yeah, with the record on it. I yeah. forgot who, who on here told us that that's yeah, he was what in, that was. Yeah, it was in the record store. Yeah, that's right. Because yep. he was the, it was the scene where Damone's uh, um, pretty much telling uh, Mark okay. Ratner how to talk to women. And yep. he's talking to Debbie Harry, uh, the, Debbie Harry standee, you know, Blondie, mm -hmm. um, the singer. So, yeah. There was something else in the movie, too, that we picked up on. And you, you picked up on it and you said, it's crazy this stuff I picked on picked up on after it being out for so long. And seeing it so many times. There yeah, was something I else. I, I like made a mental note to mention it and now I completely forgot. I it was tw somewhere towards the end of the movie. That I, I did say that. Yeah. But there, every time I see this movie, there's something else that I catch, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just one of those that, like, you know... She's like, is that Nicolas Cage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? He's just like in the stands cheering. Yeah. Man, I wish I could remember what it was. Uh -huh. I think there was like a couple things that I... Oh, and you, you didn't know this uh, either. Sorry to interrupt you. It's okay. Um, but uh, the movie's uh, the screenplay is written by Cameron Crowe. Cameron Crowe is the guy who um, wrote Say Anything as well. And he also wrote uh, Almost Famous. Oh, so. Okay. Yeah, and he directed Almost Famous, I believe, too, so. Okay. And I didn't say anything, but he didn't direct this one. Anyways. Huh. Cool fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember either. I'll probably remember when I'm going to bed I'll remember tonight. when we shut this video off. Yep. Um, anyways, uh, let us know what you think about Fast Times Ridge, my high. Um, is it one of your favorite 80s comedies? Uh, do you not like it? Do you hate it? Um... <laughs> Are you watching this video just because of us? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Highly unlikely. Oh, stay after the previews. Yeah, definitely stay after the previews for this one. Mm -hmm. um, it's not in your theater anymore because it was in theaters for a day. Yeah. But we had a great time with it. Yeah. And uh, It was a cool experience. Always a cool experience. I think E.T. comes out the weekend of August 12th, that Friday. But I think yes. it, I think E.T. is going to be playing for at least a few days from what I was seeing. Mm -hmm. when I was looking at showtime so uh, we're definitely gonna go see that um, yep next week we got bullet train bullet train and bodies 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 yep both come out so we'll, we're at least definitely seeing bullet train maybe bodies 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 we'll we'll see when we have time yeah and maybe minions sometime mm, yeah he's avoiding minions I know it I'm not there's just all sorts of other stuff that I would like to see more there's, I was just about to say that but you completed the sentence exactly how I was going to <laughs> so yeah but yeah I think minions would be fine to see now because it won't be as crowded with kids true so it won't be like as we always you know. like laugh at the kids though they're we always do. funny we do they're not our kids. Yeah, ain't my fucking kids. We don't have to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that being said, uh, I guess we're off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Had a great time. Having a great time. <laughs> Brian goes blue. And Coco do. Sign off. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, Brian goes blue. And Coco do. <clears throat> One second. <clears throat> <clears throat> That was amazing to see Fast Times in theaters again. I mean, for the first time, sorry.